What do all of those integrals here have in common? I mean, apart from the fact that they are hard as hell. Well, there are certain changes that when applied to the structures would make them a lot easier to evaluate. For example, this guy here. If we only could get rid of this x in the denominator, or maybe, you know, him. If we only could get rid of that natural log in the denominator as well, it would mean the world to us, absolutely. It would make my day. And the last thing is that we can actually do it with a little bit of help from Richard Feynman. So the Feynman trick, aka the most overpowered integration technique in existence, <laughs> is all about simplifying your integrand by introducing a parameter somewhere in your integral, making it a function of that parameter, and then differentiating your integrand with respect to the parameter. But you know what? This is absolutely best seen on an example. Consider this integral here. As I've already said, this natural log of x in the denominator just keeps me awake at night, so I'd like to get rid of it. I would like to place the parameter t in the exponent of x, and now my integral became a function of the parameter t, and I particularly care for i of 1, yeah? So the value of this integral function for t equal to 1. Now, if I differentiate both sides with respect to the parameter t, another natural log of x pops out in the integral because, well, x is just a constant with respect to t. Those logs cancel each other out nicely, and this resulting integral is well, anything but hard, I evaluated, getting that my mm, derivative of the function i of t is 1 over t plus 1, quite lovely, and this will mean that if I, well, integrate both sides of this equality right now, with respect to t, I will get i of t equal to the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus t plus a constant. I still need to find the value of this constant now, so, well, I know that both of the definitions of my i of t, the one I had originally, this integral, and this natural log of 1 plus t, those are both equivalent, so I can just, well, go on and set them equal to each other. No, notice that if I were to plug in t equal to 0 into the integral definition, the entire integral just goes down to 0, and so the entire left-hand side goes down to 0. And now if I were to plug in t equal to 0 into the natural log, I would just get the natural log of 1, which is also 0. And so setting t equal to 0, I will get 0 is 0 plus c, the constant I'm looking for, and so c has to be equal to 0 as well. And so then I get that... This i of t is just equal to the natural log of the absolute value of t plus 1. So there is absolutely nothing stopping me from getting i of 1, which is well, what I'm supposed to get, this is what I'm looking for, and i of 1, which is the integral I'm looking for, is going to be just the natural log of 2. The only problem, really, with using the famous trick is deciding on where do I put the parameter. I mean, just consider this integral here, the Dirichlet integral. So, as I've already said, I don't like the x in the denominator. So maybe I could, you know, put the parameter inside of the sine function. Then I differentiate it, and, well, that x will cancel out. But the problem is that what I'm left with is not quite convergent. I mean, this cosine of x times t, this does not converge on this infinite interval. And so... I will have to be a little bit more creative. So I'd like to multiply the entire integrand there by the exponential of negative x times t. I curve for i of 0 then, because I want this exponential to well, disappear eventually. And now, just differentiating everything, those x are gonna cancel out nicely, and I'm gonna be left with something that I can evaluate using integration by parts. No problem in doing that. And so I will get this new definition for my i prime of t. Now just integrate it, and you'll get this negative arc tangent of t plus this constant. Now we only have to, well, determine the constant now. And so once again, you have two definitions for i of t. Both of those are equivalent. Let's just send them equal to each other. And now what is the value of t for which both of those definitions have, you know, some particular nice value? Hmm, well, if I let t approach infinity, this integrand is going to approach zero because that exponential is gonna well, just drag down to zero as hell. And on the right-hand side, the negative arctangent of infinity is negative pi by two. And so c has to be pi by two. But now, I was looking for i of 0. 
if i is negative arc tangent of t plus pi by 2, i of 0 is just pi by 2. My i of 0 more is my integral, and so my integral is pi by 2. As a quick recap, the famous trick is all about simplifying your integrand through introducing a parameter to your integral and making it a function of that parameter, then differentiating everything partially with respect to the parameter, then calculating the easier new integral, retrieving a second definition for your function of the parameter, well, finding the constant term then, and then just plug in the desired value of t, that will make the i of t give the value for your integral, and you're done. So that's pretty much all about the final trick. If you're interested in learning more about it, well, then check out my YouTube channel because there are tens of videos with me performing some nice integration using that technique. And if you're interested, by the way, here are some integrals that you might you know, practice on and the solutions to those either are already on my channel or I will be posting there soon. So, you know, keep, no, be posted. <laughs> keep posted. Suck like this. Yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one.